One of the coolest things about LangFlow is its ability to adapt to the needs of any developer. So you can just drag a component into the canvas and start creating your flows and you are ready to run. But we know each case is unique and you will always have to implement your custom logic. And with LangFlow, you can do that in two ways. You can create custom components or you can customize one existing component. To demonstrate how to create custom components and to improve some existing components, I will be creating an uh, ingestion flow. We will load a lot of files and we will extract some information from the files to improve the chunking that we are generating. So we will create two custom components to, to, give, to add some information to the chunks. And also we will add some logic into the AsterDB uh, vector, vector star component so we can have a better management of the chunks. With that, you will be able to understand the, the main parts of the components and then you can create your own components. Leave your thoughts in the comment section. I would love to hear what kind of components you are looking for and give us a like, subscribe to the channel and let's dive in. The components are the smallest parts of a flow. So we will break that process into the components. We will connect the components and then we will have a full process end to end by connecting these components. In LangFlow, we have a lot of great components. You can see the tab here. You can save your own components. We will do that in this video. Uh, I dragged here the chat input component and we will see some interesting things here. First, uh, we have the inputs, uh, we have the outputs and we have some methods. So the inputs are all the parameters that this component is expecting. So uh, when I'm creating this uh, array of inputs and we have this mode line uh, input it, and we have this name input value, we, we will see that in the method we can reference that as um, self dot uh, input value. So all the components uh, names here are translated into a variable for the component. After the inputs, we will have the outputs. We can have more than one. So you can see that this is an array. When we are creating uh, an output, the important thing here is the name uh, and the method. So uh, for each output, we can have one method that will be executed when this output is, is uh, executed. So in this case, we will have this message response method, which is defined here. And it is returning some type of data. In this case, it's returning a message, but it can also generate a data or a list of data or other types. But most, a lot of times we will see message and data as the outputs from the components. And then here we can implement uh, the logic that we want. We will have the self.status, which is like the, the text that we are showing in the status of the component. In this case, it's, it's the, the message itself. And then we return, in this case, the message, a variable, which is, the, is a message. I will start by uh, mapping a directory here. So I will pick this directory. Uh, component. This will read uh, more than one file from one directory. And then this will be the output of this component. In this folder, I have these 10 uh, documents and I will uh, ingest all of these documents and extract that from the United Airlines uh, website. So some uh, regular, some basic information about uh, United Airlines uh, policies for refund and baggage. As these documents are PDFs, I will choose PDF here. And then we will be splitting text into chunks. So connect here. We will not focus on the quality of the chunk. So uh, let's just do this chunk overlap at 200 and 1000 as chunk size. So let's run this and you know. Okay, we can see that uh, we have a lot of chunks, but we don't have um, much metadata, we just have the file path. So um, before loading into the, the database, I want to add some uh, more information into the, the, into the chunks. So uh, let's add another component here. So this outer metadata component enables us to add more uh, variable or metadata into the chunks. So we can edit it here. So now I have a constant uh, metadata, in this case, I added author in my name. But what if I want to add like the timestamp that I'm loading these, these chunks? To create this kind of advanced uh, metadata, we can use a custom component. So on flow, you have this component, this button uh, in, the, in the bottom. And then by creating, you will add a custom component. And when we, we check the code, we can see that it's a minimal uh, component ready to uh, we customize. So we have this class custom component, and then we have the inputs, outputs, and a method. As I mentioned before, the three more most important parts of the component. So we will customize this component to return a data with the author name and the time the timestamp that we are running this this process. Uh, first thing that we will do we will leverage this message text input. We can do also string input. There's no uh, we don't have to worry about that. But so author And then here I will set, I define my name as value. So it's a default value 
for this component. Here we will have the outputs. I will keep it as output, output, and build output, and it is returning a data object. To return a data with the author name and the timestamp, we will have to define them here. So I will change that to data, and I return author of the author. As I defined it, the name of this, this input as author, I can access the value with self author. And then uh, we will add the updated at variable. And then here we can have uh, we can collect the timestamp. To do that, I will import two libraries here, time zone and zone info. I will define the time zone as UTC, so we will have the universal time, and we will use that to return the the time that I'm generating this this information. I will rename that to add metadata. And then instead of defining the, the, the dictionary uh, in this in this screen, I will connect them. So we can run this component again. And okay, now we have the updated that in the author that we generated from uh, the other uh, from this component. Okay, great. So we we just created uh, our first uh, custom component. Even before we load uh, the data on Astra, uh, I would like to add one another information. So as we are seeing here, uh, we have just the file, file path with the complete file. So file path, let's say that I want to create another property with only the file name. So I use the file name to control uh, the updates in this chunk. So I want to create another metadata with the file name only. I will add another custom component here and let's edit it also. So in this case, as I want to connect this component with the outer metadata and it is returning a data object, I have to change the input for this component to data. So uh, instead of message text input, I will have to change that to data input. And I will use the IO here to use data input as well. I don't have to change other things. Uh, so let's focus directly on the output method. So it will return a data object. I will create a data object array and uh, I will use the input data. So uh, all the, the, the chunks that are generating this step before are received here into the data input. And then I will extend the array with the new input data. And then for each um, uh, object that I, for each chunk that we are, we have, I will uh, extract the file, the name of the file from the file path. And as the documents that I have, have in the beginning, the category like funds or, or baggage, uh, I will also generate a category uh, attribute. And then I will return uh, this component, input data in this case. Let's connect it again and run. Now if we take a look in the outputs, we have the file path, we have the text, we have the author, the data, the file name and the category and I, I changed them to, to lower. Okay, so now that our chunks are ready to ingest into the database, let's, let's do that. I will add Astra here, the Astra component here. I will connect the output from the, my custom component to Astra. And I will choose, the, I have to define uh, a collection, a database, and the token. So let's jump into Astra. I, will, I already have a database created here. I will just create an, a collection, so it will be my uh, custom chunking. Uh, it will be a vector enabled, but I will be generating uh, the chunks in, from into online flow. And it, it will be a, uh, an open eye and I will use dot product. So I will create in this custom chunking collection. Okay, my collection is ready. So custom chunking, uh, let's use this collection on link flow. So here I will define uh, Aster agent and probably I let me update here. Okay, custom chunking now. Um, I have my collection. I have to define an embedding model. So let's bring the open eye embedding. And if everything is correct, we can hit run here and it will load all those chunks into Aster. Yeah, as I changed the chunks, I have to, def to tell the component which, kind, which are the properties that has the text. So we can do that on here and the advanced and we can define the content field as text. Okay, let's run that again. Okay, eight seconds, it's run. 
Let's take a look on the data. Okay, so we have uh, six, seven uh, chunks. Let's take a look. So we have the text and we have the metadata here. So we have the file path, we have the author, we have the updated at, we have the file name and we have the category. So all the metadata that we define and, and we enrich it during the chunking uh, generation, they are already stored on Aster. Now that we loaded our chunkings, uh, we also have a problem because let's say that I want to reload this document. I want to change the, 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 the chunking parameters and then I want to reload the data. Uh, for, this is, for this situation, we can just uh, edit this, this component to add this custom logic that I'm creating. We can do that. We also can do that on Aster because Aster will index the data in real time. So uh, let's say that we have a RAG application. This data with the new embeddings will be uh, instantly available to the application. So you don't have to wait for some re-indexing times. This is an important factor that maybe uh, you have to consider for your use case. So uh, let's edit this AsterDB component and enhance it to allow us to reload uh, the same uh, document with different uh, splitting parameters. So I will add, edit the code and the first thing we will do is to add uh, an option here, a parameter, uh, that to define that when we have one specific parameter defined, we will delete the documents uh, on the database based on this field. So let me paste the, the, the parameter here. So we will have this deletion field parameter. In the add documents to the vector star method, we will add uh, some part here, some code here to delete the documents based on the file name or in the deletion field parameter uh, before loading the new chunks. So if I have documents and the deletion field is defined, uh, we will connect to the get database, which will connect to, to Astra. We will have a, a reference to the collection. Then we will def, uh, select the, the file names that we want to delete based on the, on the, the file name that we want to, to delete. And then we will run the uh, delete menu. So this will run before uh, the inserting that is running uh, after that. So let's check and save. Great, let's define then and the, the, the options, the advanced options, context field, deletion based on field. So the parameter that we just added are is available here. And we will delete that based on the file name. Close. And then before that, we can see that we have 193 uh, records. Let's run it again. Probably it will take some additional time because it's running the deletion before. So let's take a look. Okay, so we have one to six records, so we have a smaller number, so this is good. Let's change the, the splitting parameters that we have here. Let's say that now we want we want bigger chunks. And then we will run the document again. Okay, let's check the results. Okay, six records. So bigger checks, less data is started on the collection. And let's take a look if we have our metadata. So we have the author, the updated at, at the file name, which we are using to delete uh, the documents and the category that we are uh, delivering from. We are uh, defined based on the file name. The idea here is to, to really show how you can leverage one component that is already created to implement your own custom logic. You are free to do that and you can save a document, your component here. So let's say that I will add my uh, enhance it and then I will save. And then this component, I can use this component in other flows. So let's pick this new component, enhance it. And if we check the code, we can see that um, the deletion field parameter is there and the logic is already available. So you can customize the components and reuse the components in other on other flows. Leave your comments in the comment section. I would love to hear what kind of components you are looking uh, for, which kind of challenges you are facing while implementing your custom logics on Langflow. And subscribe to the channel, give us a like, also give us a start in our GitHub uh, repository. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye bye.